You are watching Tech Confessions. Created by Amy Lewis and brought to you by VMware. So thanks for coming in today, Duncan. No problem. So talk to me about your software defined moment. When you kind of changed in your mind from thinking as much about hardware to more of a software world. That is a, a long time ago, to be honest. Yeah. I, uh, I used to be a proper server hugger, as we, uh, we call them today. I was a big fan of the physical world. Uh, I used to work for uh, an insurance company. And uh, back, back in the day, it's, uh, it's probably, what is it, 15 years ago, 14, 15 years ago. We're having a lot of the, uh, yeah, the typical data center challenges. So we had a lack of, uh, lack of power, issues with cooling. And actually, uh, during the summer, and it doesn't get really warm in Holland, but um, occasionally it will get you know, above 25 uh, degrees Celsius, which is different than by well, using Fahrenheit, which doesn't make sense for a European, but but anyway, um, as soon as we get warm, then the whole data center would, would go down, and at that point in time, we figured we need to have a solution for this. We can't keep on running an insurance company and, uh, and have a full data center going down and have you know, 800, 900 employees sitting there doing nothing. So, uh, so what we decided to do is uh, look at the different uh, options that were out there, and there was only one option, really, back then, which was uh, virtual infrastructure by VMware. So we started looking at that, and. Uh, yeah, that's what it actually, uh, for me, took off. We, uh, we brought in a, a, a SAN uh, back then, an EMC Clarion solution. And we started virtualizing uh, workloads, started moving over every single workload that we had, ranging from uh, web services, file services, Active Directory, DNS, uh, the largest databases that we had. We virtualized uh, everything. And um, yeah, that's how it got started for me. And that's also how I started you know, moving towards more uh, working on SDDC related related things. First of all, virtualizing compute, and as it stands right now, virtualizing basically anything from more or less for me to storage, of course, from a vSAN perspective. But uh, yeah, as you know, within VMware, of course, also the networking and all of the other components that are uh, that are part of it. So uh, that so was that was the start for me. And uh, so, as you've walked that on that journey yourself, what have you noticed in terms of other people having that transformation? Is it speeding up? Um, what, what would you say, where are people in general? Um, again, it happened for you as a customer, which is interesting, and then yeah. you moved into working on the technology itself. Where do you think uh, the customer, the average customer is in their, their sort of transformation moment? Yeah, I guess the, it kind of depends on um, where you're from. I mean, if I look at the Netherlands, the majority of customers are 90, 95% virtualized. We have a lot of customers even 100% virtualized. Uh, but in some countries in Europe, it's different, right? Some of them have 50%, 60%. It kind of depends on the workloads, the vertical that they're in. Some cases, they still may even uh, you know, have a mainframe running for uh, some of the legacy applications, which are difficult to, uh, to rewrite to newer architectures. So that, you know, it, it, it depends. What I have noticed is that I, I would say, you know, I, I don't think I've met a customer in the past five years that just started virtualizing, majority of customers have virtualized the computer estate, and a lot of customers are now looking at, you know, doing that next step, which is typically either looking at the network, which is uh, with using something like NSX, or looking at the storage systems, and preferably actually looking at both at the same time, start a great, you know, start a large program and virtualize the, the full estate, so do both the network and do the, do the storage at the same time and move towards a more software-defined model where you can actually create policies, assign policies to virtual machines and just make the environment more, more flexible. So, I know you're a blogger and that you write a lot and think a lot. What is something that surprised you? What's the thing that surprised you most? You didn't see it coming. So that's a, that's a great question. Um, I just came out of a meeting with a customer and I had a, a couple of meetings with customers customers over the last couple of weeks, and um, what surprised me the most uh, in my role as it stands today as a chief technologist for uh, storage and availability working a lot on vSAN, wh what surprised me the most is that a lot of customers underestimated the change from an operational perspective, and I think, you know, you will see the same thing from a networking standpoint. Because what's happening now is that 
traditionally you had a storage team, you had a networking team, you had a virtualization team, you had ap application teams, application developers, and it was all it was all isolated. But but ha what's happening right now is that some of those roles are starting to be combined, and in some cases the virtualization admin is taking on new responsibility. And when that happens, there's also an operational change. Because what we see is that a lot of the uh, virtualization administrators are not actually used to managing uh, storage systems. Now, when you do something like vSAN or when you do something like NSX, that hypervisor now all of a sudden becomes your networking solution or it becomes your storage solution, which also means that when you do maintenance to your hypervisor, for instance, where in the past you could easily place it into maintenance mode, well, you know, if something went wrong, you would simply just reboot the host. If a couple of services were hanging, we just reboot the host, maybe a couple of VMs were impacted, but you know, HA would restart them. But when the hypervisor was also functioning as your router or your, your firewall or it's doing storage, then that changes. I mean, you're not going to walk up to a storage system and pull out disks randomly or just reboot nodes of a sto uh, distributed storage system randomly. Well, you don't do that to a hypervisor here. And that's one thing that shocked me is that that operational aspect, that's a lot of, that, you know, a lot of customers tend to forget that. They, 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 they figured, you know, I'd take the next step to the software-defined networking uh, aspect of things or I, I move towards software-defined storage and they don't look at the operational aspect of things and just skip the whole part and figure, you know, that will happen magically. But things don't happen magically. You need to make sure that from an organizational perspective, you're aligned with the new model and also the processes will need to align with the, uh, the new model, the new, the new way of doing, you know, a, a data center. That's very interesting. So con kind of conquering the fear in some ways of change that, uh, yes. well, thank you, Duncan. Thank you for coming in today. No, uh, my pleasure. And thank you. If you would like to be comfortable on the couch, then join us. TechConfessionsTheShow.com.